If it wasn't already on the list, North Korea just skyrocketed to the top of items Donald Trump will be looking to discuss when he meets with world leaders in Europe Friday. U.S. officials have confirmed the North tested a new type of missile this week, one which they estimate is capable of reaching Alaska. And with the nation continuing work on a nuclear warhead, global alarm bells are ringing. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un declared the test was a, quote, gift to the U.S. for the July 4th holiday. In response, the U.S. and South Korea conducted a joint military exercise and called an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council. Make no mistake, North Korea's launch of an ICBM is a clear and sharp military escalation. The United States is prepared to use the full range of our capabilities to defend ourselves and our allies. The president also took to Twitter calling on China to, quote, put a heavy move on North Korea and end this nonsense once and for all. China and Russia have since released a joint statement calling on both the U.S. and North Korea to stop the military actions and calm down the rhetoric. So what are our realistic options? Joining me are Carol Savitz, senior advisor at the MIT Security Studies Program. Carol, it's good to see you. Nice to see you. Gotham Makunda, an assistant professor at Harvard Business School and a research fellow at the Center for Public Leadership. Gotham, good to see you, good too. To hear you, and Catherine Moon, a political science professor at Wellesley College, non resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institute. Pleasure to meet you, Catherine. Thanks so much okay. for being here. Just quickly down the list, how real is this threat? Is this Kim playing games with the U.S., or is this deadly serious, Carol? Can I answer both? You can answer both. I, yeah. I think that it's deadly serious because they're obviously increasing their capabilities and this latest one is an ICBM and that's what everybody's saying it is. On the other hand, it, I don't see what the game is. I mean, we could retaliate easily and then North Korea would be no more. I'm exaggerating a little bit. So and he South stands Korea would be no more, more too, also. Right. But so it, it's a lose-lose as opposed to a win-win, but until, he's, until somebody is willing to Put, really put the pressure on him, like China, like Russia, some of his close allies. I mean, he's going to keep egging this on. We'll get to options in a minute. Do either of you disagree with her analysis, the current state um, of affairs? Well, coming? I do think that the North Koreans do have an end game in mind, what and is it? it's not a lose, lose for them. They want to have ICBMs that could threaten the United States in order to be able to level the playing field if and when negotiations are possible to deal with all sorts of uh, matters uh, that North so Korea So do you think about. negotiations are their end game as, as well? Not negotiations per se, but North Koreans mostly want, primarily want a recognition as a, quote, world-class power. Nuclear weapons deliver that. You know, Gotham, it seems to me that, the, maybe this is a bit of an exaggeration, but just like the current president criticized his predecessor for drawing that red line in Syria, when, I guess, I think it was in January, when President-elect Trump uh, said uh, it, that if North Korea tests an ICBM uh, that could reach the U.S., quote, it won't happen. It was a rather menacing thing. Mm -hmm. That sh raises the right. threshold of pressure on him, does it not? I think that's exactly right. The sort of Trump's incredibly loose use of threatening rhetoric, which I don't think he seems understands that this is not New York real estate. The, the stakes are a lot higher here. When My answer to your question is that I don't think the North Koreans want a war. I certainly don't think the United States wants a war. But wars can happen by accident, and they particularly can happen by accident when the major power of the United States has a State Department that is empty, right? There is no right. Assistant Secretary of East Asia. There is, there is nobody. The president has made virtually none of the appointments yeah. below. Right. But wait a second, when you say the U.S. doesn't want a war, is that because we what mentioned a minute ago, what is it, half of the South Korean population is within 50 miles of the demilitarized zone, right. including the 10 million in Seoul? Right. Is that what it's about? Because the reality would lead to destruction. I think, is that, is that yeah, I think we also have to be very careful about what we're talking about. What North Korea now could threaten and hit South Korea with conventional weapons. It has nothing to do with missiles. It has nothing to do with nuclear weapons or anything else. So that we have to figure out where the line is and not, I guess, tempt them or entice them into that kind of action um, as well. So and one thing is the nuclear threat oh, and the intercontinental ballistic missile. I think the other thing is the threat to our ally, South Korea. You know, Kathy, one of the things that concerned me, I have to say, as someone who has no expertise in this area, as opposed to the three of you, is when you look at the key advisors the president has on this, seems, since there seems to be a consensus, military is not the way to go here. They're all military advisors, no diplomatic background right. at all. But then James Mattis speaks, which I guess is in late May on Face the Nation. Here's what he had to say. It would be a catastrophic war if this turns into uh, combat, if we're not able to resolve this situation through diplomatic means. 
Should that be comforting, hearing that from the general or the former general in this case? Should it be comforting? Uh, yes, comforting, because he's absolutely correct. However, the question is, whatever he says, what is Mr. Trump thinking? I think uh, Trump has miscalculated China's role in all this. Um, North Korea. Is he thought he had a deal with Xi when he was here. Absolutely. That Xi was going to put economic pressure on I North think, Korea. I right? think Trump thought uh, these Asians, there's some kind of a hierarchy, and oh, China will do its thing, <laughs> and right. North Korea will obey. That right. is just nonsense. Everybody wants to pressure China. The question is, no matter how much China can pressure North Korea, if the question is, will North Korea fold? And right. I guarantee you, no matter how much the Chinese turn the screws. Even though they're not doing as much as everybody wants them to do, if they were to do it, North Korea still will not fold. Yeah, but my they will not succumb well, to China. I've read that they might fold, but that scares China even more because right. they fold, then there's political disintegration. Absolutely. And South Korea takes over, which means good for the U.S., bad for China. Yes? Well, it's yes. not only a fear of China, South Koreans taking over, because frankly, if there were to be unification, China would rather have a prosperous South Korea taking over than a basket case, right? Right. But the Chinese economy is actually more dependent on the North Koreans than anybody really wants to admit. The northeast of China is ailing economically. There is such a tight link between the North Korean economy and the northeast right. Chinese economy, and the, Xi Jinping cannot control all of China. He can't tell all these guys uh, right. what to and do. You, uh, Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. First. Okay. So, and you, I don't think you can leave out the Russian role in all of this. I mean, Russia has alternated between sort of warning us not to take unilateral action, trying to warn off the North Koreans. On the other hand, they are increasing trade with the North Koreans now and sort of courting them at the same mm -hmm. time. And the Chinese and the Russians issue Putin and he issued a joint statement yesterday proposing some kind of, well, they'll stop their testing if we no longer do the joint military exercises with the South Koreans. So does the art of the deal man, is this a central topic for him when he sits down one-on-one -on -one with, with Vladimir Putin? Uh, it could be, but I think Putin would rather talk about Syria and Ukraine and lifting of sanctions. You know, I said a minute ago, uh, I originally was worried about the fact that he's surrounded by all military advisors rather than diplomatic ones, and then we played the man of sound. You know what also worries me, and maybe it shouldn't, you'll disabuse me. We, we played a minute ago Nikki Haley, the UN ambassador, yeah. what she had to say. Her tweet was so moronic, it was embarrassing. Yes. Spending my 4th, meaning July 4th, in meetings all day, hashtag thanks North yeah. Korea. It's like a 12-year-old right. would do. Does that worry you? Or? So it does, and it particularly worries me because it was Nikki Haley who so far might have been the most competent member of the Trump administration. I, I <laughs> yeah. so, so, I mean, we have amateur, the most powerful government in the world is, run, is doing amateur hour in what is the most complex foreign policy situation I can imagine. And Trump, I think it's particularly clear, is not good at handling these sort of very sophisticated levels of multiple trade-offs. So anything he does will involve the Russians, it'll involve the Chinese, it'll right. involve the South Koreans, it'll involve the Japanese. That's a lot of different things. To why can't trade. it just? Wait, I understand. You know, mm -hmm. why can't it just be us and them? So, I mean, for whatever it's worth, and I know that was a horrible outcome for Otto Warm Beer, but the reality is there were unofficial talks between the United States and North, and North Korea, Korea in Oslo in May or whenever right. it was. Right. Yeah. I mean, they did accomplish something. So if we can do that unofficially, why can't we do it officially? Well, we, we can do it officially. The why problem aren't is, we? what would be on the agenda? I don't know. The Americans absolutely refuse. Okay, number one, the U.S. says, North Korea, you have to denuclearize. The North Koreans say, no way in hell are we going to denuclearize. The, the North Koreans say, you reduce or stop the joint military right. exercises. With South Korea. Americans say, no way in hell Why wouldn't we do that in return well, for that? that's a very good question. And this is something that the Trump administration, Obama, George Bush, all of these administrations have taken that off the table. But if you really want to negotiate, you have to put something on the table that right. North Koreans want to deal okay, with. Okay, we only have a minute left. We're going to go down the line. Since yes. we don't trust Nikki Haley tonight, we'll trust you three. <laughs> Give advice to the President of the United States on this, 20 seconds each. Uh, you go first. I we'll think, go yeah, back I get Carol. back to me. Yes, I'm. Th this <laughs> isn't a problem you can solve. This is only a problem you have to kick down the can down the road and right. hope that situations will change on your right. behalf. The Chinese have more leverage than we do. The South Koreans and Japanese care a lot more about the situation right. than we do because it's right there. I They're going to have to engage. We there is no magic wand. There is no uh, there is no good option here. There's just I, a I would bad disagree. One. I think there are a couple. Wands. What are they? Number one, the U.S. has to suck it up and consider. Recognizing North Korea as a nuclear state officially. We already right. treat it like a de facto nuclear mm. state. That's what Washington people do. Um, so, and that's what North Korea wants. If then you enter not denuclearization talks as a framework of negotiation, but disarmament and arms control right. talks, 
North, Americans don't want to go there because that affects our geopolitical considerations about nu proliferation of nuclear weapons. That is one option we have. The other option is to point blank, be serious and say, North Korea, here are real goodies, economic benefits you can have. We have never spelled out economic benefits. Do you want to be ambassador to the UN, by the way? I know oh, people. Oh, God. Can I, you can have I, the last I get some thank you since I played before. I think we also have to understand, or Trump has to understand, that China is not going to do it for him. So I would Absolutely. chime right in here that he can't think that the, as a friend of mine put it, the chocolate cake diplomacy is going to work with Xi Jinping to, for, cake diplomacy. to put it, it's, you know, to put the pressure on Carol, thank North you. Korea. Jonathan, it's good to see you. Always Kathy, it's great to meet you. Thanks so much Thanks. for being here. Thank I appreciate you. it.